What's going on everybody? It's The Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be discussing the Chicago Bulls, and more specifically about some individual players that need their decisions to be made about their contract situation. We've talked a lot about this recently. We've talked about guys like uh, Kobe White, Nikola Vucevic. We've talked about DeMar DeRozan even. We've talked about a lot of the, these guys. Today, I want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into Ayo Sumu because I feel like his situation could be probably the most interesting interesting out of the lot. I think all the guys that we've talked about, it's a fairly simple answer for most of them. You know, for Nikola Vucevic, it's been talked about for the majority of the season that we are aiming to bring him back. I think that's very obvious. If anything outside of that happens, I think that's probably the more surprising outcome. Kobe White, Went from a guy that no one wanted to keep on the Chicago Bulls to everybody wanting to keep on the Chicago Bulls. And I think the Bulls front office will most definitely get that deal done as well. I think it would be stupid not to do it. So again, two obvious answers there. Ayo Desumu, in my opinion, is the one that kind of leaves a lot left to be desired. There are still questions and elements to Ayo Desumu that people are either quest are questioning or some Bulls fans may not be questioning. And that's what we're going to discuss in this video. Before we get started, please like and subscribe to The Bulls Show. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about whether or not you would like to keep Ayo Desumu long term for the Chicago Bulls. Now... Looking at Ayo Desumu, I think we can all clearly see with our eyes and obviously some of the stats uh, that he, ha he has put up this season that he has had a significant downgrade from his first season. Now that does come down to maybe the responsibility that he has on the team. It comes down to the shot selection that he's putting up for the team. It comes down for the massive reduction in the three-point shooting on the same amount of attempts. The three-point shooting percentage has been massively lower. And that all leads to Ayo having a worse season in his sophomore year compared to his first year in the NBA I guess that's how you can put it so altogether that does lead for Bulls fans to feel differently about Ayo Desumu from their first season to their second season I think if you ask many people about Ayo Desumu last season or his, in his first season my apologies I think everything would be about praise praising Ayo Desumu what a great first season he had the guy that came from the second round no one expected to be as good as he was both seasons he's made the all-star I guess rising stars team and he's played in both of those games. So that's a big accomplishment for him. But yeah, about his first season, he was just, again, there was nothing but praise for Ayo Desumu. I think if you talk to Bulls fans this season, there are questions about Ayo. I feel like a lot of people are now starting to question Ayo Desumu in his second year. Is he going to be good enough for the Chicago Bulls? Will the Chicago Bulls want to pay him a lot of money? Do we see a future with Ayo Desumu? Um... Is his drop-off, I guess, something that we should be concerned about? All these questions. And I think a lot of Bulls fans now are starting to kind of feel how they probably felt towards Kobe White in his second season. Just unsure, I guess you could say. Just unsure about whether or not Ayo Desumu is the right direction to go down with the Chicago Bulls team in the future. But here's my point of view on the situation. Because Ayo is a second... Again, I know he's older than Kobe White, but he's a second-year player. And experience in the NBA does mean a lot. Someone being in this league four years compared to someone being in this league two years, there is experiences there that Ayo Sumo has yet to face that Kobe may have faced already or is going through at the moment. And Ayo Sumo in his second year, in his contract year in his second year, I expect... I don't necessarily expect the perfect season from him. Some players thrive in contract years, but someone that's just getting his feet wet in the NBA, it's difficult to ask him to deliver above and beyond in his second season. There are a couple of players that have had drop-offs from their first season to their second season. It is what it is. Ios might be bigger, but it's still a drop-off nonetheless. And I, I just feel like it comes down to how much we're willing to pay Ayo compared to how much other teams are willing to pay Ayo. I think it all comes down to that. Because I think there's only a, a, a set amount that he could get paid. I think it's around $9 million, if I'm not mistaken. If other teams are willing to pay that, maybe the Bulls can say, look, we, we want to keep Ayo, but for $9 million a season, when he's had a drop-off, it might not be worth it. And maybe they do let him go if that's the case. But judging by the fact that he hasn't really had the best season, maybe there are some teams that are not willing to pull the trigger on Ayo and give him that big amount of money 
I guess, to that standard of that restricted free agency. And if the Bulls swoop in and, and pay him, that's great. But if they pay him a little bit less, it still could mean we could get Ayo Desumu at maybe a discount price, which, again, I think is very spot. It would be very, very good for the Chicago Bulls if they could do that as well. So there are a lot of decisions there. But in terms of the development, I would say... I think patience is ex an extreme virtue in this situation. And again, I think we have seen cases where patience has worked out. I think we've seen situations where patience has yet to work out for the Chicago Bulls. But the one thing that we need to keep on doing is providing that patience. Again, in Kobe White's second season, everybody wanted him to leave. In Kobe White's third season, everybody wanted to leave and they would riot if it never happens. In the fourth season, everybody's willing to give Kobe White that chance once again. Sometimes development is not a straight curve all the way up. Again, I think it's very rarely the case, in all honesty, where development goes from this point, just goes all the way up, and it doesn't have any downward spirals. A lot of development, you have to go through those downward spirals to get better as a player. I'm not saying it's going to happen to Ayo Dosumu, but what I'm saying is you've got to give him that chance to learn from those downward spirals and improve in the future. That's what Ayo has to do now, and that's what I feel like the Bulls need to give him the chance to do. I think we saw so many great sparkling moments from Ayo in his first season that I would, I, I, I would not want to give up on that development in his second season just because it wasn't as good. I think you've got to let him work, man. I think you've got to let him find his own way. Some people go through these downward spirals to get where they need to be. And hopefully Ayo would be one of those players. And I still think he has that mentality to get better. I still think he's that guy that... He's still the same guy in his first season, which is constantly improving upon constantly improving. The guy went from a no-minute player to starting for the Chicago Bulls, to be a reliable starter for the Chicago Bulls, to be someone that we wanted to start for the Chicago Bulls. And let's not forget, he was starting for the Bulls majority of this season. I think his role will take a massive downward spiral next season. I don't think he's going to be starting. And I don't think he's going to be the main go-to on the bench. But that doesn't mean his development still won't be there. And I still feel like Ayo is one of those guys that I would like to keep. The only worrying thing is A, the price, and B... If we bring another guard into this team, one guard's going to have to go or a couple of guards are going to have to go. Now, Patrick Beverly is the one that I think will go if he's going to ask for a lot of money. He might be the one that leaves the Chicago Bulls, but it still, again, puts a lot of minute restrictions on guys like Ayo, which could, have, in the end, affect his development. I wouldn't necessarily go over the top and offer him a four-year deal either. I think it's possible, and I think it's not the worst thing in the world to do. But if they want to give Ayo two, three seasons and offer him a two- or three-year deal, in terms of, I guess, restricted free agency, if that can happen, I think the Bulls wouldn't be um, opposed to doing that either. But, yeah, let's wait and see what he does. I'm, I wouldn't give up on Iowa in his second season. I, I think a lot determines on his third season and his fourth season in the NBA. Um, but, yeah, I would not give up on Iowa and his development right now. I know a lot of people have. I know a lot of people will. For me, I just don't think that we should, and that's why I hope we keep him. I, again, I don't expect him to be a starter in the future. I don't expect him to start next season, but I still think he could be important for us. Defensively, offensively, in transition, and improving elements to his, of his game, and being more aggressive as a player, I think all these things can lead to Io being a good player for this Bulls team. And that's the most important thing. We need good players on this team, coming off the bench and starting. And Io has, a, Io has that potential to do so. Um, but yeah, and I, I would also, but sorry for keep on dragging it on, I would also put development on the coaching staff and the Bulls organization as well, because we have seen that the Bulls are not great at developing players. Um, look, the, the track record is there. How many superstars have we truly developed as our own, from our own draft pick to becoming a superstar? How many of them have we really done? Jimmy Butler was probably the last one that actually happened. So you might take credit for Zach Levine, but Zach Levine, again, came here injured, um, was already proving to be a good scorer in Minnesota. Maybe not what he ended up being on the Bulls, but he's still still a solid scorer and there was the potential was still there for Zach. So we haven't really developed our own homegrown talent. We haven't really developed a player that we have drafted yet. And look, Dalen Terry is another one that we're going to be talking about in a few years' time, whether or not we should trust Dalen Terry and extend him. These questions will continue to be asked. So altogether, Again, it just it, it also comes down to the history of the Bulls and not being able to develop players effectively for the majority. 
So yeah, we'll put that in the conversation as well. But I'm going to end this video here. My answer is we should keep IO. Will we keep IO? I have no idea, but I think we should. And we'll have to wait and see. Maybe there's a sign and trade that can happen. Maybe a team like Detroit or the Charlotte Hornets, which were interested in him well before the season ended. Um, there were rumors about Detroit and Charlotte being interested in him. Well, if they pay him the the max money they can actually get within the restricted free agency, which, it, which isn't a lot, but it's still a lot in terms of is he worth $9 million every single season? Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Maybe a team will pay that, and then we have that decision to make. We'll see what happens in the offseason, but thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next Chicago Bulls video. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful and safe day. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care, and peace.